Assalamu alaikum children. I'm going to read you a story from the book called Sufi Stories from Around the World, published by Harper Collins India. Remember that this is a Sufi story from around the world, so it's based upon a true story, but not everything in the story is going to be true because people have told the story to somebody, then they told it to somebody, and they told it to somebody, and sometimes they change a little bit. So just remember that you have to take it with a pinch of salt. But you could learn something from the story. This story is called The Widow's Gift. Shah Ni'matullah was a popular Sufi teacher and poet who lived in Persia a long time ago. Persia is Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan today. He was a saintly man whose teachings brought people closer to Allah. Shah means king and he was certainly a king among holy men. But he had a powerful enemy in the ruler of that land, Timur the Lame, who was the Mughal emperor of India. Timur was a cruel king and was hated by most people. When he realized that Shah Ni'matullah had a great many followers and that some of his own generals and senior officers had become his disciples, Timur grew worried. He decided to find some excuse for getting rid of Shah Ni'matullah. It did not take the king long to plot the downfall of the Sufi. Somehow he would show that Shah Ni'matullah was not the only was not the holy man that everyone believed him to be. Then Timur would have him executed for being a bad Muslim and cheating people. Timur paid Shah Nimutullah a visit in his home. I have heard so much about you that I had to come and meet you for myself, said the sly king. The Sufi teacher welcomed him politely, as he would anyone who came to him. But surprisingly, Timur refused all his food and drink. Instead, the king had brought his own food with him. He had his servants spread a rich feast of bread, tender lamb's meat, fruits and dates in front of the Sufi. Then he asked Shah Niyamatullah to join him in the meal. When they had finished eating, Timur asked him a question. I have been told that you are such a good Muslim that you will never eat any food which is haram or forbidden, said Timur. Is this really true? Only Allah can judge how good a Muslim anyone is, replied Shah Nimutullah. But yes, it is true that I never eat anything which is haram. Then you are a liar, said Timur. The lamb which you have eaten was certainly haram. This was just the moment that he had been waiting for. Shah Nimutullah calmly asked him why he had made such an accusation. The king then ordered his cook to be brought to them and commanded him to explain to the Sufi how he had, he had got the lamb. The cook said that Timur had ordered him to steal a lamb and cook it for their dinner. So I obeyed his majesty and did not go to the market to buy the meat. Instead I seized the lamb from a poor old woman whom I saw. This was proof, said Timur, that the Sufi had eaten meat which did not belong to him and was therefore haram. Shah Niyamutullah gently pointed out that Timur too had eaten the lamb. But the wicked king argued that he was not considered a great Sufi teacher and had not boasted that he did not eat haram food. The Sufi must re receive the death penalty, he insisted, as an example to the people. Wait, said Shah Niyamutullah. Let us look into the truth of what the cook has told us. We should question the poor woman too. Timur saw no harm in agreeing to this. From the cook's description of the old woman and the place where he had robbed her, it did not take long for the king's soldiers to find her. They brought the woman to the Sufi's house where Timur was also waiting. As soon as she saw Shah Nimatullah, she burst into tears. Alas, cried. Alas, she cried. I am sorry to come to you empty-handed. I am a widow and my only son had come to a sh gone to a sheep market in a distant town. I heard that a bad accident had happened to him there. But yesterday he came back safe and sound. The news of this accident had been a false alarm. By Allah's grace, he was also very successful in his trading at the market. So feeling very happy, I decided to visit you this morning and was on my way here carrying a little lamb as a gift. But the big brute stopped me in the street and stole my lamb. 
Shani Matula comforted her, saying that Allah must have willed that her lamb should reach him one way or another. He explained that all that had happened. He thanked the woman for her gift and blessed her. Or prayed to Allah to bless her. The old widow went away. Her sorrow turned into happiness once more. Timur, the evil king, had witnessed all this in astonishment. He was forced to admit now that the Sufi was a good man and that he had no proof that he had ever ate haram food. Still, Timur had made up his mind to be rid of Shani Matullah once and for all. So he was going to kill him anyway. He pointed out that the Sufi's name was Shah. One land cannot have two kings, said Timur. Even though he knew very well that Shani Matullah was not a king in his sense of the word. So Timur ordered the Sufi's banishment from his kingdom. Shani Matullah did not protest. He packed his few belongings and left. Some years later, when Timur died, his son Shah Rukh came to the throne. Shah Rukh was a very different kind of king from his father. He had always admired Shani Matullah and now begged him to come home once more. When the Sufi teacher finally returned, there was great rejoicing in the kingdom. That means everyone was very happy. So this is a story from India about a holy man and an evil king. And because it's a story that has been told from many people, we must remember that not everything in the story is true, but it's based on a true story. So we have to check the facts when we're older and look for evidence. Here are some things that people have reported that Shani Mutallah used to say. Number one, engage yourself as much as you can, my friend, in remembrance of Allah. If you can work, remember him when you are working. Number two, take one step beyond yourself. The whole path lasts no, no longer than a step. Number three, if you never discover the creator in his creation, you will find the house but not the door. Number four, I cannot tell stories of Allah's mysteries with pen and paper. Number five, a rose without thorns cannot be found. There is no gathering of roses without shedding blood. I hope that we can learn a list lesson or learn something from these stories. But we must remember that these are just stories and we shouldn't believe everything here is, is evidence. Instead we can check what we read from stories, take the lessons that we can and remember that there could be some things that are mistakes in it. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.